Okay, now we have the jQuery and the JavaScript files all linked up in our HTML document. Let's go make something happen. We're going to make this menu respond to clicks. So we're going to be programming in this file here called schoolmap.js. Okay, the first thing we have to do with our jQuery is a, it's kind of a routine process that every page has. You have to tell your script that you're going to wait until the document is all loaded and then you're going to execute the code. So I'm going to type in this thing called dollar sign parentheses document dot ready. And what that means is I'm going to execute code when all of the page has been loaded. So it doesn't get ahead of itself. Inside this parentheses, I'm going to put the word function. And inside there is another parentheses and we're going to use a curly bracket and a closed curly bracket. So it's a little strange when you first see it, but this is the routine that you do on all websites. I'll press enter a couple times and then close this with a semicolon. So there, that's the starting point for every web page made in jQuery. Let's use this command called alert, which is a real simple command. It says whatever you type in between the parentheses and the quotation marks. I am ready to go, let's say. And we'll put a semicolon at the end. Now I'm going to save this and see what it does. Let's go back to our web page, push the refresh button, and now you see the alert that popped up. So the text I said, I'm ready to go. That means jQuery is working. So that's a great test every time you create a website to make sure that you plugged in everything. If it doesn't show up like that, you type something wrong, you gotta stop here and go back and check. Okay, so now we're ready to put some code in between these two brackets. The uh, way that CSS and uh, jQuery call things is very similar. So in jQuery, we're using this uh, dollar sign and a parentheses. But inside there, if I put in the name of the ID of this item here, we're talking about this select menu. So this whole select menu has an ID of location menu. So I'll copy that. And I'm going to put in the hashtag and the location menu ID. That means we're going to listen for an event at that ID. So like a click, for instance. Or in this case, I'm going to ask for the uh, computer to listen for a change event. So I'll put in the word dot change. Then inside the parentheses, say I'm going to create a function. And that function has a bracket and a close bracket and a parentheses and semicolon. So you notice this is going to start looking familiar. The end of a section has those three characters all the time. Now here on line four, in between these brackets, we're going to call another action. So alert seems to be a good one to check to see if anything's happening. So I'm going to say alert, you clicked me. And let's see, let's see if this works. I'm gonna save the changes click on the web page and refresh it. So we'll change the menu. So I'll choose secret locations and now I got an alert box that says you clicked me. So this means the code is being executed and uh, jQuery is working. Now instead of sending an alert I'm going to do a little bit of work with the um, with the CSS on this uh, code here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to assign a new variable. And in JavaScript, the keyword is VAR. And uh, I'm going to say the name is going to be item selected. And so the item selected is going to be equal to something. So it's going to say the location menu dot VAL. Now VAL is a keyword that tells us the value that was picked. So the VAL is this thing. It's either classroom, recreation, or secret location. And so one of those three will be picked. Let's see if we can get that to pop up on the alert. So I'm gonna say alert, item selected. Okay, so let's save the work and let's see what's happening there. So I'll refresh the page, change the menu, and now it says you picked recreation. So that seems to be working. I'll pick a different menu. It says secret locations. So this value in this variable is being stored whenever the mouse is clicked on that menu. Now we'll try a little bit more JavaScript code here. So I'm going to erase this line six and I'm going to introduce you to an if command. So we can say if something like item selected, 
and I'm going to use a triple equal sign. So that means if this is equal to, and let's call this uh, classrooms, let's see if that was the correct value. So yes, classroom, recreation, and secret location are the three. So if, if it's equal to classroom, let's do the alert again to say uh, you picked classroom. Let's see if that works. I'm going to save the work and refresh the page. So now if I select the recreation, nothing happens. Secret location, nothing happens. And if I choose classroom, I get an alert. So the alert says you picked classroom. Click OK. So you can see what the if statement is doing. It's checking to see if this value is equal to another value. Well, let's copy this and let's make two more parts to the uh, if statement. I'm going to align that right. And instead of classroom, I'm going to say recreation is one of my choices. And the other one was called secret location. And let's do the alert different. We can say you click classroom, we can recreation. And this one is we're going to put secret. So we should have a different alert depending on which value we chose. Let's refresh it and test it. Recreation comes up, says you picked rec. Let's try the other. You pick secret locations and you pick secret. So it seems to be doing its job. Now what we really want to do in the end goal is to hide and show some of these items on the page. So instead of doing the alert, I'm going to delete that and I'm going to do something with CSS. Let's first of all go into the CSS commands and let's create some new classes. I'm going to have a class called dot um, visible and I'm going to have another one called dot invisible. Okay, for these different classes, I'm going to have a new property. It's called visibility. So type vi and tab. And this is going to have the property visible. The next one is going to be visibility and the property is called hidden. So now if we were to add a class called invisible to any of the items in our HTML, it should disappear from the map. Let's check it out and see what happens. So I'm going to go to the HTML code and let's take place number one, which is the tennis courts. So for the first item on the list, I'm going to set the property of the class to invisible, save the work and refresh my page. And sure enough, the item up at the tennis court is gone. So let's uh, take that one away and save it and refresh the page and it appears again. So the class called visible or invisible will make the item now disappear. And the only reason it works is because of the property we set in the H and sorry, the only reason it works is because of the property that we set here in visibility. So the power of JavaScript is it allows you to modify properties like classes and the um, visibility of an item. So I'm going to go back to my JavaScript and in this section, if classroom is selected, I'm going to say that I'm going to select all items. So all classroom items. And then there's a command in, J in jQuery called add class. And the class that we're going to add to this thing is called visible. Okay, so now if it were invisible to start with, it would now become visible. Let's do another. Let's do the uh, selection for the other classes. Let's say um, recreation. And we want to add the class that is invisible. And then I'll do the same thing. I'm going to copy and paste let's see what we can do for the secret location and so they will have invisibility put upon them so remember this only works if we click on classroom so we'll save our work refresh the page we're going to select recreation it says you picked rec now i'm going to go back and choose classroom so classrooms are all now shown here and then the uh, others are gone so they've been hidden so why didn't my football field turn invisible? Let's take a look at our HTML code. In my football field area, 
this class has only the item place on it. So it looks like I overlooked that. So this is going to be a recreation group. Save the work. I'm going to refresh the page, rerun the script, and this time it should hide the football field as well. Okay, so now I'm going to let you figure out how to do the others. We've got one item to pick for as an example. You code the other ones and make the program work.